What's going on, Oasis Kids? This is Pastor Aaron. I am so excited to be with you today. I know, I know, I know you were expecting Mr. Kenny to uh, give you some kind of a lesson this morning. Well, uh, I guess you're stuck with me for just a few minutes, and I am so excited to be with you. Maybe, just maybe, I will do okay enough that Mr. Kenny will invite me to come to class sometime and join him in the Oasis Kids class. Maybe we'll see if that can happen. I would absolutely love to come and hang out with you. But the reason that I'm here is that Mr. Kenny is actually teaching for the adults. And so we worked it out that he would do the adults, I would do the kids, and that we would have a lot of fun in that regard. But either way, I am excited to come to hang out with you guys for just a few minutes, and I hope that you can learn a little bit about God's Word and some of the exciting things that He has in store inside of His Word. This morning we are continuing uh, really a story that started several weeks ago, uh, before Christmas and all of those things. You guys were in the book of Daniel, and in the book of Daniel you had a couple guys that were... Um, really actually pretty important. But these boys were, uh, they did some things that were a little not um, maybe what everybody else was doing, and that's not always a bad thing. But these guys were in the midst of not, they, they were unwilling to eat the king's diet and the king's meat and the king's food, and they were willing to test the king and say, listen, give us this time frame you let us eat our food, you let them eat that food, and at the end of it, let's see who is better. But that's kind of where you left off. And the names of those three boys were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Well, actually, before that, it was Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, but it changed to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And so we're going to kick off and continue that story here this morning, wherever it is that you are. And I'm, again, so excited to be with you. And so in that story, you have King Nebuchadnezzar made all of these decrees. And right after that, in chapter number three of verse number one, so if you have your Bible, we're not, we're not going to do some sword drills, but if you have your Bible, Daniel chapter 3 and verse number 1, it says this, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold. He made a huge image. He made a big statue, and it says that it was 90 feet tall. I don't know if you know how tall 90 feet is, but that's really, really tall. You figure your mom or your dad is probably anywhere from 5'8 to 6 foot 6 two or three, uh, and you can add to that and just imagine maybe your mom or dad can help you see what 90 feet is. But he made an image 90 feet tall. For what purpose? For what purpose? It really came to be that the purpose was that everybody would worship and bow to this image. Everybody would honor this image. And in verse number six, and in verse number six, it says, And whoever, whoso falleth not down and worshipeth the same, our shall be cast in the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. If you are unwilling, when all the music is playing and all of the celebration happens and everything takes place, when everybody else is going to be bowing down to worship, if you are unwilling to bow down, what does it say? It says you'll be cast or you'll be thrown into a fiery furnace. I don't know about you. I like fire. I really do. I like to make fire and or build fire. How about like, uh, how about having some s'mores? Marshmallows over the fire. Some chocolate. Fire is, fire is a great thing. But you know what? As much as I might like to put a marshmallow in the fire, there is no part of me that ever wants to be in the fire. That's horrible. 
It would hurt. It would burn. It would, uh, it would feel miserable. But this is what was going on. And King Nebuchadnezzar built this furnace that was so hot. And he said, if anybody would not bow down and worship, that I will immediately throw you into that fire. Well, I think for you, and I think for me, and I think obviously we will see in the case of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that there's only one person that we're supposed to worship. We're only supposed to worship God. And that made them have a major decision to make. You know, I want to say this right where we are at this kind of point is, I wonder how many of us out of obedience have different things in our lives, maybe what we would call boundary. If you like sports, there's a, uh, on a basketball court, there's marks, there's lines that would call it out of bounds. In football, there's a, there's a sideline where if you're outside of that, you touch that line, you are out of bounds. Those are boundaries. You have to stay inside of those boundaries. I wonder how many of us have boundaries so that we do the right thing and we stay and we are remaining obedient unto God. See, I think Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had some boundaries. And one of their boundaries was that they would only worship God. And so we see the story as the story continues. It says, hey, when, uh, when all of this music is playing and, and when all of these things take place, Everybody better bow and worship this idol, worship this statue. And most of you know the story. It's a really awesome story. But these three Hebrew boys, when the music played and the worship was taking place, they would not bow to the statue. Rather, they disobeyed the king because they were honoring and being obedient to God. And there was somebody, there was people around them that did not like them. And really, that's why a lot of these things were taking place. They wanted to catch these guys. They wanted to get them in trouble. Others that were jealous of who they were. They were jealous of their positions and jealous of their titles. And they said, uh, King, King, King. Hey, King. King. There's these guys over there. They're not bowing down. Of course, the king does what? The king says, you need to come over here. Go get them, boys. Go get them. They need to be here. So they go and they get him. And they bring him to the king. And he asks them. And he looks at them. And then he says, I'm going to give you one more chance. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you another chance. I'm going to, uh, surely in the presence, in my presence, while you're standing here, surely you won't be obedient to me, the king. But see, they weren't fearful of the fire. They were fearful of God. They weren't fearful of the punishment of what it would be if they disobeyed the king. They were fearful of God because we're only to worship God. And so these, these men, these or these boys were brought to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And in verse number 16, it says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee this manner. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image. They said, king, as much as we might respect you, We believe our God is bigger and stronger and more powerful. And that our God will save us from that fiery furnace. 
But then they say this, but if not, and if, if we were to go into the fiery furnace and we were to burn, even still we would not worship you. See, the story goes that those three boys, those three Hebrew boys were to be thrown into and cast into the furnace because even again as the music was playing and everybody was to bow and worship in their in the face of King Nebuchadnezzar those three Hebrew boys did not bow they remained obedient unto God see because they had boundaries in their life they had set up a system they had set some things in their life and they said we will not cross that line and we will worship God and only God. See, sometimes when we do the right thing, those three boys were thrown into the fiery furnace. Now we know that God joined them in the midst of that furnace. But see, sometimes when we just choose to do the right thing, God steps in and helps us. God kind of carries us. I wonder if we would do the right thing. Do you know the other thing that happens when we do right is that other people are watching. And if you were to continue on in the story, and I'm not going to read every one of the verses, maybe like Mr. Kenny and your teachers would in class, but you know, one of the things that happens inside of that is King Nebuchadnezzar eventually would come to a place where he would change that law and make it to the point that they could only worship God, the almighty God. And they did that. Why? They did that because three boys chose to be obedient. Three boys chose to do the right thing. Three boys chose to have boundaries in their life and honor God in everything regardless of what might come. And I, again, I ask the question to you as kids and those that are adults watching, I wonder, do we have those boundaries and are we willing to honor God regardless of what's going on and taking place around us? So this morning, right where you are, I'm asking you, maybe, just maybe, you can look at some rules that you have at your house and think, okay, what are some boundaries that I can put in place? What are some things that I can do so that I won't cross that line so that I give my ch myself a better chance of being obedient to my parents? And by being obedient to your parents, ultimately, we're being obedient to God. Maybe we could do that. See, when God saved Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the furnace, he showed his power and his glory to the king. Maybe you have some friends that are watching you. And because they watch you and they watch your obedience and they watch how you live your life, they too will see God through you. So today... Being obedient is not just about doing the right thing and having the rules obeyed and making sure that I make mom and dad happy. No, it's not about that. It's, it's about being obedient to God. And as we are obedient to God, as you obey mom and dad, as you obey your teachers at school, as you do right, you're being obedient to God. And God is going to hold you and carry you but just as much so is that others are watching you. And so I hope that this week you will choose to be obedient. Maybe you'll choose to sit down with mom and dad and they can help you with some boundaries so that you, you too can do some of the right things and honor God. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for allowing me to be your teacher for just this little bit. And I hope that you had an awesome Christmas and a great week. And we are so excited for this next week where we will see you back at church on the 10th. And we'll also have you back at Awana January 10th at 5 o'clock. Make sure you tell mom and dad that you want to be at Awana this upcoming Sunday, January 10th. I look forward to seeing you later. Have an awesome day, guys.